January 12th, 2010, 4.53 p.m. local time. All hell broke loose in Haiti when an unprecedented earthquake of a catastrophic magnitude of seven struck the island. Tens of thousands of Haitians died within minutes, with thousands left wounded and bleeding under the rubble of collapsed buildings. The capital Port-au-Prince was in mayhem, with government facilities destroyed, infrastructure damaged, the army and the police were completely overwhelmed, and of course, all telecommunications were down. Pictures of former President Preval airing in the streets of Port-au-Prince, unable to use his cell phone or any other phone for that matter to call for international help. These pictures are still vivid in my mind. Uh, as Mike said, I work for the Ministry of Foreign Affairs in Luxembourg, and as it happens, my department is also in charge of international humanitarian aid. The news of the earthquake reached us overnight, and as of the next morning, our emergency response team uh, met in order to define the form and the scope of Luxembourg's assistance to Haiti. Within two hours, we had decided to deploy two surge and rescue teams from the Red Cross and the Civil Protection. Only four hours later, they were on their way, and they arrived among the first international responders in Haiti. They were eager to put their six sniffing dogs to task and start saving lives, because they knew fully well that you only have 72 useful hours in order to save the lives of the women, the men and the children that are trapped in the debris. Unfortunately, the teams failed to do so. You can easily imagine their frustration when the lack of coordination at the airport in Port-au-Prince prevented them from spreading out and help. Up to 12 very useful hours were lost because coordination simply did not happen. Why? Well, as I said, all telecommunications were down. No networks, no connectivity, no coordination, so no effective aid. Five days later, back in Luxembourg, after the debriefing session of the surgeon rescue teams, we decided not to leave it at that. In order to save more lives, we need a better response capacity to restore telecommunication services within hours, not within days after a disaster occurred. We need to bridge the gap before the United Nations can move in with a much heavier telecommunication gear. We need to be lean, we need to be fast, we need to be reliable. And because it is a, it is a matter of life and death, because nobody had come up so far with a satisfying answer, we decided to design, to develop, and to deploy emergency.lu. Now, emergency.lu is a public-private partnership that comes in the form of a satellite-based telecommunication platform, airborne within two hours of an alert. Once it is delivered to a disaster zone, it takes less than one hour to hook up this telecommunication terminal to its inflatable antenna that you have seen outside of this hall then to point the antenna to a satellite in geostationary orbit, 36,000 kilometers above. The up and down link provides high-speed internet connectivity for voice, data, and image transmission. Wireless local networks allow humanitarian aid workers on the spot to register their laptops, their tablets, or their cell phones to use the satellite capacity for free, at no cost. How come? Well, the Luxembourg government has decided to put its money where its mouth is. Full public funding allows us today to offer emergency.lu as a free global public good to the international community. This, of course, would not have happened were it not for the commitment and also the professional skills of three Luxembourg-based companies, High Tech Luxembourg, SES, Société Européenne des Satellites, and Luxembourg Air Ambulance. Nor would it have happened without the help of the World Food Programme and our technical partners Ericsson and Skype. Now, the result of this unprecedented alliance has already changed the lives and also the work of humanitarian aid workers in the field. January 5th, 2012, the first four telecommunication terminals of that kind have been deployed in South Sudan, the youngest country in the world. It is also facing, as you may know, one of the most challenging humanitarian crises in the world today. Before emergency.lu got deployed there, humanitarian aid workers often had to drive for hours just to send a fax or get cell phone connectivity. Today, the work of dozens of international organizations and also of NGOs has become more easily coordinated 
and has become also more effective to the benefit of the thousands of refugees and the internally displaced persons within the context of the armed conflict in South Sudan. As a welcome side effect, also the newly acquired connectivity adds greatly to the relief workers' personal safety, and it allows them to keep in touch with home at no cost. Now, we are really thrilled. We are excited about the big difference that we were able to make over such a short period of time. Further opportunities to use the emergency.lu technology beyond the emergency situations for uh, uh, telemedicine, for example, or for uh, distance learning, such opportunities are now being explored. But already today, I can confidently claim that we have successfully overcome some of the shortcomings of the Haiti situations. Here is why. First, because we now provide faster access to high-end ICT services in emergency situations. Second, we make international aid more effective. And third, most importantly, and beyond the mere technological prowess, we help saving lives around the world. And by the way, um, last night, an uh, earthquake of a magnitude of 7.4 hit Mexico. Now, the immediate damage assessment that was made on the ground did not warrant for the full deployment of emergency LU that time. But as of the first news of that earthquake, it is important that you know that our teams had been put on pre-alert. Thank you very much. <laughs>